Welcome to Five to Nine, the movie game for movie fans, where we have to connect actors to actors through no fewer than five and no more than nine movies. I'm your host, Eric Ginsberg, and we're coming to you live on tape from my apartment during quarantine in beautiful Asbury Park, New Jersey. Do you love movies? Do you love getting lost in the IMDb, the internet movie database? Do you love talking through, oh, who is that guy? Who is in that thing? What's his face? Then this is your game, and this show is for you. In just a moment, I'm going to introduce today's contestants. But first, I want to remind you that if you'd like to be a contestant on 5 to 9, you can enter for a chance to be on our show by beating us at our own game. Just download or purchase official 5 to 9 game cards at 5 to 9 game.com. Play today's challenge, post a photo of your winning game card on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and tag at 5 to 9 game in your post. So, my first guest, she is a singer, she is a songwriter, she is at times a reluctant cat lady. Everybody, please welcome Sarah Donner. Hello, Sarah Donner. How are you? Why, hello, Mr. Ginsburg. How are you? I am very well. I am so excited to have you on the show. Now, you and I were chatting just before the show, and you were telling me that a movie you really want to see made is you want to see a David Bowie biopic. And I need to know from you, who is your dream casting for Bowie? Or would it have to be like the Dylan biopic, I'm Not There, where different actors play him in different phases? And if so, name all of those actors, please. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so that just that, that came from my recent uh, uh, obsession with Rocket Man, which came from Bohemian Rhapsody. And just the fact that I don't actually know that much about David Bowie, uh, and I'm not going to read a book. <laughs> <laughs> so I would appreciate, please, someone to make a biopic of, of David Bowie. I feel, I actually, I, I wouldn't, I feel, I think it, it could probably it could it could go both ways. It could be a, a, a male or female gender kind of bender actor. For um, sure, for sure. You know, there was yeah. a documentary series called "The History of Rock and Roll." I think that was the name. I watched it mm -hmm. uh, in the summer of like 1997 on mm -hmm. PBS, and they devoted an entire episode to David Bowie and Andy Warhol. Like that mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't name an actor off the top of my head that I would imagine to be David Bowie, but it is, it would definitely be something that I would quickly pick up on my radar and watch just because I feel like I don't know enough um, about him or about his music. You know, it's, it's, you know, I just know what everybody else knows, or the popular hits and stuff sure, like that. Sure, sure, sure. No, I get you. Well, his son is a director, so maybe he could direct the movie. That'd be cool. But, uh, Sarah, why don't you tell me, uh, tell me about your music. Tell me about uh, Cats, and tell me about how Cats and your music kind of merge into one entity that is your art. Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I, I foster kittens. Uh, I've been fostering kittens with, with my husband, Michael, for a good 20 years or so at this point. So um, a fair amount of writing and, and musical uh, expression, you know, is surrounded by cats at all times, especially uh, when we were living in New Jersey, which we haven't for a few years now, but um, a, a good portion of my, you know, artistic formation was spent in a very tiny apartment in Princeton, New Jersey with many cats. So you couldn't, you know, you couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a cat, basically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's just these little critters that are always, whether you like it or not, uh, around while you're creating your thing. And so uh, inevitably, uh, they do work their way into your lyrics. Um, and so I believe I believe my first record was, uh, well, yes, my first record was Reluctant Cat Lady because that's that was just the beginning, and I was like, I'm not a cat lady, I'm just I'm just cool or something. <laughs> and then there were these kittens that would uh, eat that would I think they grabbed bagels or tortillas out of our garbage. We lived across the street from this amazing um, Mexican restaurant called Tortugas. And you would just, like, animals would, like, come across the street with burritos. You would see a squirrel, like, carrying an entire burrito wrap, just, like, flapping it like, behind it. They're like, like chimichangas for later, yeah. you know? And, <laughs> because we lived uh, adjacent to kind of a woodsy area 
um, where you know the squirrels and the the cats and stuff would would take their they would go grab their tortugas like we would uh, yeah and they would you know yeah they would take well, their kills their their chimichanga kills <laughs> go across the street they but but they would never leave it for you like as a gift oh like no no like a dead animal but uh while we're uh while we're talking with you let's introduce your husband and your musical partner in your uh i'm gonna let you define the genre but your band kitten slay dragons michael mclean hello michael how are you Hello, Eric Ginsberg. I am fantastic. How are you doing? I'm all right. So why don't you guys tell me about Kitten Slay Dragons, your uh, 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 electronic, and I'll let you guys describe the rest of it from there, band. Sure. It's uh, it's electronic. It's a synth pop, sort of synth wavy project. I feel like we are using all like the same instruments as the synth wave movement, but we don't have... Um, kind of the retrospective aspect, like the nostalgia. So it's not quite synth wave. So it's definitely synth pop though. It's lots of beeps and boops and, you know, we might be pop wave. I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, we <laughs> might just be genres. our own genre. We are just paving the way. Yeah, right. and and Michael, you also own Abbey Cat Woodshop. What is Abbey Cat Woodshop? Oh, Abbey Cat Woodshop is basically my uh, Etsy store. Um, it's also my garage where I actually make this stuff. And I mostly make things for homebrewers, for uh, microbreweries, for bars. So I make tap handles. And back when they were bars. Back when they were pubs. <laughs> restaurants that you could go to. Yeah, so... Well, people so, can still make their own, you know, home batches and they still need a paddle for that. Yeah, so actually oh, yeah. now that, in case future generations are listening, we're in the middle of a global pandemic in right now. In case they're all generation. <laughs> so earlier when I said I'm fantastic, that's probably not true. Um, <laughs> but like, so, but I feel like when, when the pandemic hit and everyone has been locked down, like my business has shifted a lot from selling a whole bunch of tap handles to like the bar brewery that's opening up to home brewers are finally uh, starting to brew again. They're like, oh, I'm stuck at home. What am I going to do? I'm going to brew some beer. So I make mash paddles for them, which is a brewing tool. Um, I make tap handles for their keg raters, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, you and I were talking before the show uh, and you have expressed to me such an affinity for the Fast and Furious franchise, which oh, yes. is oh, not yes. what somebody would expect from otherwise knowing your music and your art. What is it about the <laughs> Fast and Furious franchise that just draws you in and keeps you? Yeah, what Wait, is well, it, Michael? Please what is tell it us. about me that is makes you think- family? Is it about family? It is about family. <laughs> what, what is it about me that made you think I had taste? <laughs> Because, you know, I, oh, definitely about family. It's also about nostalgia. Like, I remember going to see that first movie in theaters and being like, what the crap was that? That was amazing. And they just keep releasing them. Yeah, and well, so you know, that, that movie was actually supposed to be a straight to home video release, but it did so well in test audiences. They decided to put it straight to theaters. And then Vin Diesel turned down, I think it was something like $10 million to make the sequel which they, of course, cast Tyrese in. Yeah, so, yeah, so Too Fast, Too Furious, which is not a good movie. Um, and I did not like it when I first saw it in theaters, because um, I did, because I was a big fan of the first movie. I was like, wow, that's not a good movie. But now my love of the franchise has infected my brain so much that when I rewatch Too Fast, Too Furious, which I do, you know, whenever I rewatch the entire franchise, like, I actually like it now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but definitely Vin Diesel's not there. You're and broken. You definitely miss him. <laughs> but you're so excited in the third movie, Tokyo Drift, when like there's that little tiny bit at the end where Vin Diesel shows up. You know, which I have read is supposed to take place sequentially in between numbers five and six, or four and five, something like that. Well, the character of Han, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> dies in the third movie, um, and then uh, so the next, I think, three or four movies. Uh, happened before that in the timeline. So Han is still alive. And so the whole thing is sort of the build up to when Han dies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's not the point of the movie, but that's how I watch it because I'm a Han fan. <laughs> sure, sure. Different, different Han than the one who shot first, but a Han nonetheless. Exactly. Boom. I think either Han would shoot first, by the way. There we go. So, guys, we have invited you here today to play the movie game Five to Nine, where you'll have to connect two actors through no fewer than five and no more than nine movies. Here's how we're going to play the game. 
Before our show, I asked you guys to write down the names of five actors. And I put those names in a hat, and I'm going to randomly draw them so that you're going to have to connect them. The first name I'm going to draw is going to be Chris Hemsworth. Okay, I like that guy. And we're going to have to. He is a very handsome man. He is one of the many Chris's. He's also one of the many Hemsworths. He has two brothers, Liam and Colin. Liam and. Oh. Do they also act? Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Hold on. I got to fact check that and edit myself. Are, are they <laughs> all as beautiful as he is? I didn't. Uh, they, well, to uh, one of them. Um, I'm having a brain fart right now because now I have to look things up and I shouldn't have to look things up because I know his name 99 days out of 100 and right now I'm having a brain fart. Um, Liam. Liam. Li- oh, I, I, I said Liam. And Luke. Liam and Luke, I think. What are they in? Like, what do they do? Uh, give me one second, and we'll have a whole chat about it. This Great. Isn't part of the I can wait. I know. I'm screwing the whole thing up. It's ruined. You're doing great. Why did you choose Chris Helmsworth? He's in like. Two I was the one talking over you, and you started saying that. Yeah, so. Luke. I was shame there. on me. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that part again. Okay. Uh, you asked me, Chris Hemsworth. I said he's uh, he's one of many. Chris also one of many Hemsworths. Uh, yeah, so he has two brothers, Liam and Luke. Liam is very well known for a lot of films, but of course, The Hunger Games are the most popular movies he was in. He was also in a rom-com with Rebel Wilson called... I watched I, it a couple you know, weeks ago. <laughs> Isn't it I didn't was even it on know Netflix? I, I, was it was on, on Netflix? HBO, actually, but it was, it was an actual uh, box office release up against Deadpool for Valentine's Day that week. But what? Uh, That's Luke not a... Hemsworth is best known for his work in the HBO original series Westworld. But fun fact, in the third Thor movie, Ragnarok, when there's the play mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. Loki is putting on a play about himself, not only uh, that, it's brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke Hemsworth plays Thor. His brother uh, Luke oh, plays oh, Thor. Oh, oh. Ah! We saw that movie and we were like, who are these actors who are playing? Because it's, no, it's a it was brilliant Sam scene. Neill. Sam and Neill it was, was... Odin, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Matt Damon, and... who had played Loki in Dogma, was now playing Loki in this. Mm-hmm. Oh, fun, shut up. Fun connection. That's but, a fun uh-huh. connection. So, way too much talking. I'm going to edit. I topic. digress. Uh, you're going to go from Chris Hemsworth to Colin Firth. Hmm. Who the crap is Colin Firth? Shut up. That's my choice. Colin Firth. So okay. is he in... Uh, Please be careful because your microphone is resting on the table and you are making some banging table sounds. Ow, I'm sorry. Yeah, Michael was like, don't put your cup down on the table. I've tried to edit podcasts before where we were setting drinks on the table that held the microphone and it was awful. <laughs> yeah, so Bonk. that's going to be my life. So that's, that's why I gave you that advice. Okay. <laughs> Let me go. Sorry. I, it's not, it, will not, it will not hit it again. We're also going to draw a third name as a wild card. If you can go through that wild card, you can earn three bonus points. Our wild card is Morgan Freeman. Hmm. Morgan Freeman, who eventually will have to narrate a movie about our current dystopia and or play, well, not the president. I think, you know what's interesting to me is that during the Bush years, when presidents were portrayed in movies, they were portrayed as dopes. During the Clinton years, when presidents were portrayed in movies, they were portrayed as really smart guys. And I just, I I think people have been so afraid of getting political that we have not been portraying presidents as a Trumpian kind of figure in the last three years. But I think in a few years, we're going to start seeing those characters creeping into movies for comedic purposes. We'll see. (laughs) So... Finally, we're going to spin our house rule wheel. Each time you guys hit the house rule, you're gonna get a bonus point. So I'm gonna give that wheel a little spin. And let's see, our house rule today is period piece. So any period piece and oh, oh boy. Oh, well, so Colin Colin Firth and Freeman have been in a number of period pieces. Any period piece is going to get you one bonus point. Now, Sarah, Michael, as you do every day in real life, you'll be playing together, and I'll be here on the sidelines to offer some help along the way, but okay. not too much help. Are you guys ready to play the game? 
Oh, I was born ready. Jess? I don't know. I think you were born naked and screaming, but I wasn't there to say, so who do I mean, that was like? also me this morning, so whatever. Fair enough. <laughs> I apologize in advance to the actors who spent a career building a body of work whose faces we know, but whose names we may butcher, and to all the hardworking writers, directors, and producers <laughs> who picked the perfect name for a film that we may likely fumble through. I swear, we really do love your work. So start talking it through. Of course, Kevin Bacon is always <sighs> worth two bonus points. Any Saturday Night Live cast member is always worth one bonus point. Think about some Chris Hemsworth okay. movies. See if you can get to Morgan Freeman and or Colin Firth. Go. Okay, so. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Yes. Uh, Chris Hemsworth. Yes. Is in movies with uh, Chris Pine, right? Just the one. Just the one. Just the one. Which one was that? He's, that was the uh, the Star Trek movie. The J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie. They right? played father um, and son. They shared no scenes. Okay. They killed yes. Chris Hemsworth right in the beginning. But sure, you could go with that. Sorry. Sure. Um, but also, Chris Pine is in, uh, what's that Sondheim musical? Oh, yeah. He's in Into the Woods. Into the Woods. Who else is in Into the Woods? Uh, so many people. Um, James, what's his face? It just uh, seems like Emily, a good connection Emily, what's her point, face? You know? Okay, so Meryl Streep is in Into the Woods. Mm, nice. Uh, Meryl Streep is in Into the Woods. Uh in the bodice ripping scene Mer- the two guys who's the other guy it's chris pine and uh i don't know uh, it's the the bodice agony ripping scene? yeah they're like in the river like singing agony and they're like tearing at their they don't have they're not tearing bodices they're tearing their I, own clothes off right but like i think that was the joke it's like right they're the two guys okay. pining after bodice ripping just sounds like rapey so i don't know oh well look <laughs> no there was no bodice ripping but, but uh, I bet you could, I bet, okay, so Into the Woods to Morgan Freeman, Meryl's, you wouldn't know anything that Meryl Streep is in, Meryl Streep. That's true, I would not. Ah, <sighs> she was Margaret Thatcher. And she that was movie. in The Iron Lady. Yeah, she was in The Iron Lady. Uh, She's in so many movies. I yeah, think I, I most recently saw her in The Laundromat which is a Steven Soderbergh film, which is yeah, now available I saw that. on Netflix. It was great. That's a weird movie. You don't expect what's coming at the end. I was like, yeah, Ooh. Yeah, and yeah. you know, the uh, young lady who played her daughter in that mm-hmm. film, uh, who mm-hmm. all of her scenes was just, she and Meryl Streep acting together, was the girl I used to carpool with to arts camp, Melissa Roush. That was so exciting for me Shut to get up. to see her acting with Meryl Streep. And granted, you know, she was on The Big Bang Theory for many, many years and, you know, the number one rated sitcom on TV. But acting with Meryl Streep, what a dream come true. Honestly. I have a question. Should we go with a different route? Like, we could go Chris Hemsworth to anyone in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sure could. Uh, here's the problem. I still don't know who Colin Firth is. Okay. So Mr. why don't we talk Darcy. through that one? That way we know where we're going. Okay, so Mr. Darcy, also Bridget Jones' Diary, if you want to take that. Um, I've never seen any of those. Okay, The King's Speech. Nope. He was the king. Uh, so period he's dramas. He's just delightful. Oh, Love Actually? <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, I, I do like Love, Love actually. actually. Okay. That might actually be a guilty pleasure movie for me. Okay. Like, it's so bad, but I it like is. it anyway. It is so awful. It okay. is. So, uh, uh, okay. Okay, so, <laughs> so wait a minute. Who else is in Love Actually? Everybody. Uh, yeah. Hugh, Everybody Hugh, with a British accent Hugh and Laura this, Linney. And Denise uh, Richards. And Denise Richards. And, and Shannon, I forget her name from American Pie. Elizabeth Shannon. Oh, I don't know who that is. They okay. play the Americans that the guy brings back from America. Emma Denise Thompson. And Elizabeth. Elizabeth Emma Shannon. Thompson. So that seems like a pretty Alan good Rickman. Mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're trying to get, get from... from any of them to Morgan Freeman. Oh, oh. Okay, you got it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'm not there yet, like but I'm getting there. Okay, so Colin Firth was in Love Actually. Right. Sure was. With Alan Rickman. Right. Who was in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves with Morgan Freeman. Oh, mm, nice. There you go. There you go. Yes. So thank bonus you. Thank points. you. Working um, it backwards. I like it. Uh, that, that's, that, that's a smart And my thing. favorite part of that movie is when he says he's going to carve his heart out with a spoon because it's dull and it'll hurt more. Yes. Because it'll hurt more. Well, at least I didn't use a spoon. Um, okay. So we 
got to Morgan Freeman. God, so Kevin Costner? So no, that's not going to connect to Chris. Well, you've already used Morgan Freeman from Robin Hood, so you can't do anybody else in Robin Hood. You've used two of those great stars, and so now we're going to go from Morgan Freeman right. to get to Chris Hemsworth. Mm. Morgan Freeman to Chris Hemsworth. What else is Morgan Freeman in? Okay. Uh, ooh. Shawshank Redemption. Never saw that. Um, you never saw the number he was one basically... movie of all time by users on the internet movie database. Never, not once. So, so what about me made you think that I had taste? <laughs> it was the unicorn shirt, really. Oh, okay, yeah. For those of you listening um, to the audio version and the video version, you can see a unicorn that says, I will cut you on his t-shirt. And it has a little knife, like, taped to its horn. Yeah. <laughs> um... All right, so Tom, uh, Tim, 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 what's his face? Okay, it was also, okay. Was, we already went Alan Rickman to Morgan Freeman, and now uh-huh. we need to go. I'm trying to go Shawshank. I, it's, I don't know. That's just the one that. Well, what other movies movie. is Morgan Freeman in? Um, so uh, many movies. Yeah. So many movies. I mean, he was a president in some movie. He's probably a president in like 20 movies. Maybe. Um, what was the movie that he was president in? He was president was like, in one, he was vice president, and then later president in a different series. Huh. I mean, it's a, all those, a like... A classic trilogy that is, I'm using that word very ironically. Classic trilogy. Um, it's, it's not Olympus Has Fallen. It's yep, something else. Yep, that the third one in the trilogy. That's oh, no! That's okay. the one. Oh, that's okay. the first one. First one right. in the trilogy. Yeah, Olympus Has Fallen, London Has Fallen, and the third London one Has was, Fallen... Oh, oh Angel, Angel Has Fallen, Angel which is not fallen. good. Okay, that's a guilty pleasure movie yeah, yeah. for me, too. We watch those, for sure. I should have known that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, but who else oh, is in okay. that that could connect it for us? Um, so, uh, what's his face? Is anyone in that movie also in the Marvel the main... Universe? No. Okay. Well, I don't, um, the, the main dude, um, <sighs> oh, I he was also the main dude in 300, and what's his name? Oh, he was, it? yeah, he was the he's the, the hero in Olympus Has Fallen also who's Phantom of the Opera and it was terrible um, well who else because we could go really Morgan Fre- don't tap the table sorry <laughs> da uh, you're not helpful I told ah, you I would be I know um, <laughs> I don't know anything about movies um, okay oh Gerard Gerard uh, the name of an occupation Doctor. Gerard, Gerard Way. Butler. Go, Butler. Gerard Butler. Okay. I feel Go. like maybe Gerard Butler. <laughs> Name of an occupation. Are people still butlers? <laughs> Who's um, Gerard Butler? Gerard Butler is he's the guy. <laughs> is, is he the guy from uh, Olympus Has Fallen? Yes. Okay. So where are you gonna go from that to get to Chris Hemsworth? I don't know. I'm just <laughs> I'm shooting the breeze here. Okay. I don't know what else. Well, you said Eric knows. I'm sure he knows. You, you said he's I, I in a Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> uh, and you said he's in 300. I don't know any other. He's in 300. Movies. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, and you don't have to go with him, and you don't have to go with the Olympus Has Fallen trilogy for Morgan Freeman. He has. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there must work. be a better. Yeah, I feel like we need to go with something else that. for Morgan Freeman to get back to Chris. I mean, you can go back to the film that made him a massive star in the 80s. You can go back to. Any one of the gajillion movies he's been in since then, he's played detectives, he's played God, and he's played everything in between. Oh God. Hmm. Cr- he's just not like... I just hear crickets. That's all I hear. He's, he's just like not in an Avengers movie, and that would make it easy, right? Okay. So that would make it easy for you. Um... Well, also, because Chris Hemsworth. Right. Now, you don't want to get to Chris Hemsworth too fast, because if you get oh. to the life of Morgan Freeman, that's going to be fewer than five movies. Okay, so Morgan Freeman. What else is he in? <laughs> uh, oh, where's the one where he's a, he's like a, is he in Dead Poet Society? He is not in Dead Poets no, he's Society. A, um, Robin Williams. They are very different Well, people. they're very different. <laughs> um, no, I'm trying to think of him like dressed like a scholar in a movie. Uh, am I just making that up? Maybe I'm making that up. <laughs> um, how about... 
Uh, uh, like I'm thinking, maybe like, we could go backwards. Deep Impact or like is he in president that? in that? Yeah. Oh yeah. right. Who else is in impact. that? Anybody useful? I can't think of. I see. If you said Independence Day, see Independence Day and Deep Impact are the same movie in my head, but I know right. Not. Was it? But it wasn't Aliens and Deep Impact. Mm. Was it? No, it's a comet, right? I think it's a comet. It was just yeah. like yeah, Armageddon, no, it's but... Eli- Elijah Wood was in Deep Impact actually. Mm-hmm. Elijah Wood, whose first acting role was the kid playing the arcade game in Back to the Future Two. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so let's see, Elijah Wood. Yeah, so we go Morgan Freeman to Elijah Wood. Okay, Morgan Freeman to Elijah Wood. Anybody in Lord of the Rings that was with Chris Helmsworth? Hmm. There must well, who's, be. Uh, oh Liv my Tyler god! Is there... in Lord of the Rings, right? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, Sean Astin, Vigo, what's his face? Anderson, Ian yeah. McKellen. Mm-hmm. Sir Ian McKellen. Yeah. Sir, sorry, Sir Ian McKellen. You have to apologize to me. You have to apologize to Sir Ian McKellen. Sorry, <laughs> you Sir didn't Ian me. McKellen, um, who was also in Cats. Mm, one of your guilty pleasures. Which is one of my guilty oh, pleasures. Oh, and that's the connection right there. Because if he's in Cats, who else is in Cats? It's, uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, no. Uh, he's Judy also, Dench. He's the gatekeeper guy in the Thor movies. Uh, oh! Mm-hmm. Oh! It's just Elba. There Idris Elba. Go. Idris Elba. You have done it. You have won the game. Congratulations. Let's shout it down. Let's spell it out. Let's see how you did it. So Chris Hemsworth is in Pick Your Favorite Thor movie or or Avengers Infinity War with Idris Elba, mm-hmm. who, of course, was in the most recent spinoff of Fast and the Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. How would you yeah. like that movie as, uh, an, as, as an aficionado? I give it a eh. <laughs> it and was like course, a whole different thing. And of course, Idris Elba was in the most recent Star Trek movie as well. While mm-hmm. we're talking about Chris Hemsworth connections, we could have gone from there. But you're right. Oh. So Chris Hemsworth was in, I wrote Idris Elba instead of Thor, was in a Thor movie, Pick 'em Anyone, Don't Care, with Idris Elba, who was in Cats. May we never get the butthole cut. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who knew cats would make it in? Who, which starred Sir Ian McKellen. What is happening here? Who is with Elijah Wood in Lord of the Rings? Yeah, I got a weird thing. Oh, I see what Uh, happened. Yeah, I was just, I was trying to do a weird movie thing. Not movie, movie. Like a podcast? No. I was moving a uh, copy around on my trackpad. Okay, so I'm gonna take it from the top. We're spelling it out. We had Chris Hemsworth was in Thor with Idris Elba, who was in Cats with Sir Ian McKellen, who was in Lord of the Rings, the whole trilogy, but we can just go with, give me one of them. Uh, the one with the hobbits. They're all the ones with the hobbits. Elijah Wood. Yes, but pick a Lord of the Rings movie. There's three of them. Oh, uh, the first Fellowship. one. The Fellowship. Fellowship of the Rings. Of the I'll Ring. give it to you with with Elijah Wood, who was, yes, in Deep Impact with Morgan Freeman, who was in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, with Alan Rickman, who was in Love Actually with Colin Firth. That is a win. We're going to tally up the points. We're going to take 10 minus the number of movies. We had six movies. That gets you four points did you go through your wild card of morgan freeman for three points you sure did did you get to the house rule of period pieces yes although oh. four takes place uh, in contemporary times cats is a period what about piece set in maybe the what about of lord of the rings i'm getting what? well that's i oh. is that a period i just assume that's what the middle earth is like i don't know it didn't say <laughs> I mean, I, I would count Star Wars as a period piece because it takes place a long time ago. Far, far away, right? Far, far away, that's right. But also Robin Hood uh, is a period piece. Love actually takes yes. place there you go. in, I assume, a uh, London dystopia, but we're going to not go <laughs> with the past. But you do get two bonus points for the house rule for both Cats and Robin Hood. Did we use Kevin Bacon? We did not use him. 
this time did we use any SNL cast members? No, oh, but you are right. walking away with four, seven, nine points and a win today on the show. Congratulations, Sarah, Michael. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to be on five to nine today just for being on the show, but of course for winning, you've each won the official 5 to 9 gamepad, which comes with 50 game cards and is also available now at 5 to 9 gamecom Listeners, make sure to check out Sarah Donner's music wherever music exists. Make sure to check out Kitten Slay Dragon, Sarah and Michael's uh, electro-pop band, synth-pop band. Make sure to, if, if you're home brewing, Abby Cat is giving you guys, selling you guys wonderful wooden mashers, mallets? What's it called? Tell me. Mash paddles. Mash you can, paddles. Yeah, just go on Etsy, look up Abby Cat Brewing, and you'll find me. Um, can I uh, argue for a moment, Eric Ginsberg, that um, we should get an extra point for the game? Because in order to maintain audio, we just watched one of our foster kittens poop in a corner. <laughs> And we did not stop it because we did not want to like ruin the flow. We were trying to be real cool about it, but podcast. like, which is a big which, pile which you're of poop. While I'm doing the outro, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you want the point for not doing the thing you're now doing. We, we didn't do it till now. <laughs> okay, maybe we don't get the point. Never that's mind. That's Never fine. mind. Take if you back. five to niners listening out there in the podcast ether were chomping at the bit, yelling out a better solution to today's challenge as we played through it, don't you can enter that. for a chance to come on our show by feeding us at our own game. Just download or purchase official five to nine game cards at five to nine game.com. Play today's challenge, post your game card on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and tag at five to nine game in your post. High scores as well as creativity and entertainment value will all be considered. This has been Five to Nine. I'm your host, Eric Ginsberg. Our show is recorded in my apartment in Asbury Park during quarantine, as well as Cassidy, Donner, and McLean in Massachusetts. We're really traveling the Northeast in the last couple quarantine episodes. Our theme music is today by me. Subscribe to the Five to Nine podcast, the Apple Podcasts app, Google Play Store, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, if you guys want to look at us too, or literally everywhere else you get your podcast. Please play with us online through social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can play today's challenge or make up your own and play with or against the Global 5 to 9 community. Just don't forget to tag at 5 to 9 game in your post when you do. Thanks for listening and let's play together again soon. Yay! You guys were this great. This is NPR. You're great. Yeah, All right, I'm going to go clean up that poop. Yeah, do that. Do clean, clean up the poop. There's a big pile of poop under the <laughs>